With the total solar eclipse now just a little over three weeks away, we're going to start to give you a preview of what you can expect as far as sky cover and sunshine. Now it may be too far out to be in the 10 day forecast territory, but we can look back on 2017 and see what some cities saw during the total solar eclipse. And I can also talk to you a little bit about the impacts the eclipse may have on weather. And there's some very interesting links between the totality and the darkness associated with an eclipse and how the temperatures and weather conditions respond. So let's break into the data. We're going to be talking 2017 and also looking ahead towards the big day in 2024 coming up in just a little over three weeks. Now across the country, there were some areas that were in the sweet spot in that path of totality and also scoring some sunshine. Now the path was perpendicular in 2017, stretching from the Carolinas all the way up towards the state of Oregon in the Pacific Northwest. This go around, it's going to be very different in 2024. Now some locations in the southern Ohio Valley saw some sunshine, also sunshine to the west. Now there was a little bit of haze from wildfire smoke actually in the Pacific Northwest during the eclipse, and there was also cloud cover in the upper Midwest in the northern Great Lakes area. Overall, though, there was still some good viewing, especially in those prime locations of southern Illinois and Kentucky, where there was sunshine in 2017. Now for us here, we can look at climatology. In other words, what past weather conditions have told us about early April in 2023. We had bright sunshine on that April 8th day. However, April can be a wild card weather wise. In 2022, we saw scattered showers. In 2021, we had summer feeling temperatures close to 80 degrees with a quarter of an inch of rainfall. And in 2020, another balmy April 8th with a little bit of rain, but also a mix of clouds and sunshine. In other words, April often brings us a mixed bag weather wise. So let's look back at the last couple of years and talk about our weather conditions on April 8th before we start to give a sneak peek ahead. In 2023, of course, we had those brilliant blue skies full on sun sunshine and fairly pleasant temperatures in the upper 50s, which is seasonable, not warm by any means, but about average for what you'd expect into early April. Now the year prior was not a good year for viewing. If we did have the eclipse on that day, it would be bleak, gray and overcast with scattered showers. Now the rain only amounted to two hundredths of an inch of rainfall. However, it was still a gray and overcast day. The year prior, April 8th of 2021 brought us a summery feel near 80 degrees but it was a mix of sunshine and storms. One of those days where it was sunny one minute and there were thunderstorms the next. The year prior in 2020, a very mild feel at 74 degrees. Again, not amounting to much in terms of rainfall, and we saw a mix of cloud cover and sunshine on that April 8th. Now, early April can bring us a good deal of rainfall, of course, Fingers crossed that doesn't happen this year, but we have seen over an inch of rain on April 8th. Several years brought us close to one inch and 0.98 in 1926. Now April snowfall is even more of a rarity, especially with just how mild this winter has been and how little snow we have received. But it has happened most recently. You may recall 2016. There was some early April snowfall that was fairly significant, amounting to close to four inches of accumulation. Now let's talk about the impacts the eclipse can have on the weather because of course we want good weather for the viewing of the eclipse but believe it or not when the sun goes into hiding during the total solar eclipse the weather can change as a result. One of the most obvious and dramatic changes is the drop in temperatures that can occur. Now before and during the total solar eclipse, as the sun begins to become obscured by the moon, temperatures can drop and that is likely not surprising. At nighttime, the temperatures drop when the sun goes down and we see the same phenomenon during the total solar eclipse. During the darkness that occurs in daytime, a drop in temperatures occurs. Now that can often begin 30 to even 60 minutes before totality and the impacts linger even beyond when the sunshine returns. Now looking at a couple of cities in 2017 and the temperature drops that they saw during the total solar eclipse. Now this graph shows you the percent of the sunshine that's obscured. These were all fairly close to a total solar eclipse, but not 100% in totality. Even without the total solar eclipse, there were still some notable drops in temperatures in Greensboro, North Carolina, Winston-Salem and Raleigh. We saw some notable drops in temperatures. Yeah. <laughs> 
ranging up to 12 degrees down to 6 degrees. Imagine that a 12 degree drop in temperatures in a matter of just an hour or two as a result of the sun disappearing behind the moon's shadow. Now let's look at a couple of more cities. Carbondale, Illinois was one of the prime viewing locations during that total solar eclipse and totality occurred just after 1 p.m. Now temperatures spiked before the eclipse. We saw the usual rise that occurs during the daytime. This eclipse happened in late August. Keep in mind, so that's why it's so warm and a lot of these locations are well south of us at 10 a.m. Temperatures were in the mid 80s. They climbed up to 89 by noon and then totality occurred shortly after one. You'll notice we dropped down to 86. Typically in the afternoon, temperatures go up, not down. That is not the case during an eclipse. Temperatures actually fell to 84 before rebounding. It's interesting that that late afternoon sunshine actually caused a bit of a spike in temperatures following that initial drop. Now here's another city, Paducah, Kentucky. Of course, a very warm part of the country in the month of August. Temperatures gradually rose late morning, topping out in the lower 90s by lunchtime. Now into the afternoon when totality struck, temperatures dropped down to the upper 80s and there was that same secondary spike that occurred once sunshine came back out following the total solar eclipse. Hopkinsville, Kentucky was another area that was in totality and saw a good deal of tourism and also media press due to their viewing location. Now temperatures, as you'd expect, not going to be quite as warm at 10 a.m., but then by 12 noon jumped up to 90 degrees. Once the eclipse occurred, we saw that drop in temperatures and again the secondary spike. So similarly, what you can expect is there's going to be a drop in temperatures here at home, but then temperatures could very well bounce back. Now, of course, our eclipse is happening in April. This was in August during a very toasty time of year, especially when you look down to the south. This is Marion, Kentucky, which has an even more dramatic temperature graph starting off late morning in the upper 80s, spiking to 91, and there's that four degree decline in temperatures. And what's interesting is the drop in temperatures often last for an hour or two before you get that secondary bump. Now that secondary spike in temperatures may not be quite as dramatic in April as it is during summertime when you have more hours of sunshine to capitalize on to see that increase in temperatures. So that's the most obvious impact of the eclipse on our weather conditions before, during and after the eclipse. A noteworthy drop in temperatures is expected. In fact, that drop can begin even 60 minutes before totality as the gradual process unfolds. Another impact that we see is the weakening of the winds. What happens during an eclipse is often what occurs at nighttime. You ever notice that at nighttime the winds often seem to subside? Oftentimes that occurs during the eclipse as well. Winds weaken and after totality concludes, you see a gradual uptick in the wind velocities. Now, one of the more obscure impacts of the eclipse that hasn't been studied quite as much is the potential on cloud formation and even a few development of showers or thunderstorms because of the temperature difference during the eclipse. So what can happen is that during totality, the air actually cools and that causes more density in the air and that cool air is more dense and warm air can rise. Now, if there were an area that was just on the fringe of the eclipse that was still seeing some sunshine, the air there is still going to be warmer. However, in the region of totality in that path where the sun is totally obscured, the temperatures are going to drop. The air will become more cool and dense, and we're going to generally see a sinking of that air mass. Now, there is the chance that some areas outside of totality could see just enough warm air to cause that warm air to rise. It's more buoyant and less dense, and it could rise over the cool air. Now, at the very least that can cause a few clouds to develop during totality. However, at the best case scenario, you could potentially even get a pop up shower out of that. This was more likely of an effect during the 2017 eclipse during the peak heating of summertime, not quite as likely during April time, but still interesting that there is going to be a temperature contrast between those in totality and those who only have a partial solar eclipse where temperatures will likely be higher. Now, when we look at our temperature map on April 8th, one of the things you may notice is that southeast East of Toledo, areas like Tiffin and Upper Sandusky, they're likely to be cooler. However, north and west, up towards Hillsdale, it is going to be warmer. Usually that is not the case, but because of the total solar eclipse, there could actually be a temperature gradient where those who are not in totality see warmer temperatures and those who are in totality, even though further south, they do actually see some colder temperatures as a result. We're going to continue to keep you updated now that we're well below one month to go. You can subscribe for weekly updates at WTOL.com slash email. And I can't wait to share the latest eclipse content with you each and every Friday leading up to that big day.